Good morning, church. Good morning, family. Glad you're here and glad that our extended family uh, out there in the computer land is with us today all around the world, the United States and the world. So welcome. We have been in a series. Uh, Crystal and I are back from Canada. Pete just got back from India. Uh, and still, we had time to be in a series on generosity. And so... Um, in this whole subject of generosity, I always like to take a look at what the world thinks of what, you know, what it thinks of generosity compared to what the church thinks. And so they do the, you know, the in-depth studies. And the, there was one on the TED Talks. Y'all listen to TED Talks? I, I like TED Talks. And so, it's, you know, it's these people who, you know, research things for years and, you know, they've written a book. Uh, now they're, you know, they're brilliant. They're 50 miles from home with a briefcase, which makes you an expert. And so there's this guy and his, I was going through TED Talks and I typed in generosity and he had done a study on generosity. So it's quite interesting on how the world studied and saw the benefits and some of the down things about generosity. I mean, they're just going, you know, the outcomes of being a generous person over being a one who doesn't give. And so they looked at, you know, they looked at surgeons, doctors, uh, corporations, engineers, and they found out that people who are very generous produce less than those who are not because they're always about other people's business and helping everyone else. And they thought, wow, well, these people must make more money. But they found out, no, generous people make more money. So that just intrigued them. So here's what they found in their research. Said that a, a person who's typically just a generous person is about helping people around them and it makes them not as successful at what job or task they had to do the day. But what happens is that when they work for an organization, it makes the organization better than if you had people who were just individuals working for you. And so, as a whole, so generosity works within corporations, within family units. It works within communities. If you are a person who doesn't give, you're not a giver, and you work at a corporation or you're in a family, you're not benefiting the entire unit. You're not benefiting the community. Where, when a community prospers, so that generous person who may not be as productive in the day, he has helped his company prosper, which ends up making him prosperous. Isn't that a strange twist on it? Because people who are typically not generous, and they're all about them, you know, they think, well, i got to be about me. They make them all about me, but in the long run, they're not as prosperous as those who are generous. And that's how it works. And then when I saw that, I'm going, that makes so much sense. That if... If you are in a corporation, if you're in a family unit, I know neighborhoods. I love Pete's neighborhood. He was in a neighborhood just down around the corner, and you're lucky if your football didn't get stolen in the front yard if you left it out after supper. He moves to a very, very nice neighborhood. People who work on, you know, they have their own companies. They work for corporations. And Pete's lawnmower that uh, over here, his neighbor sold him, you know, he worked on him and stuff like this, this little crappy riding lawnmower. Well, it just gave out. And so Pete goes shopping for a mower, and he happens to mention to one of his neighbors, he goes, yeah, I'm looking for a mower. And he goes, do you want one of those zero turnarounds? I got one. You can have it. He goes, yeah, it was my dad's. He doesn't need any more. He shouldn't be mowing. He goes, you can have it. He goes, what do I owe you for it? Oh, me. <laughs> it's like, that's generosity. What did he do? Well, one thing, he improved the neighborhood. And the next thing is, you know, Pete, they invite him over for every party he has. You know, so they get to come over. So it's just a mat. It's just, it's just a, one improves the family, the community. And the other is just kind of a stingy, a stingy kind of guy. So <clears throat> we're going to take a look at what biblical truths and things that we have to overcome as believers, what it is to be generous. Now, I titled this Givers, Takers, and Matchers. We're going to spend a lot of time on the matching, but I think we, we understand what a giver is. 
Um, <clears throat> here's what generosity is. Generosity is love and action. A lot of people think they may be generous, but you can't, you know, you can give without loving, but you can never love without giving. It, it's, it, it's, you can't. Generosity has an action involved with it. You just can't think, I'm generous. There is an action. There are words. There, there's energy spent for that. You tell, you know, if you tell your wife you love her, but you're not generous with her, guess what? You don't love her. That's not love. I mean, the, one of the most familiar verses in the Bible. God so loved that he, wow, you don't get higher than that. He so loved that he gave. He didn't just so love that he sent. He didn't just so love that he made, you know, he gave. He gave. And I believe that words have meaning. Words have meanings, and how often a word appears in the Bible has meaning. Let me just give you an idea. The word believe. Now, the Bible is all about believing. The word believe, and you can do this real easily if you have a Bible program. The word believe appears in the Bible 272 times. That's pretty good. Pray. Pray 371. Love 714. When it comes to the word give, the word give is mentioned 2,152 times. That has meaning. The, 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 there's something that God is trying to get across to his people. That we're not all individuals, but we have a community. And it's important that we give. There, there is something that is beneficial for the person who gives and the person who receives when it comes to giving. I love Proverbs just does it so right out in your face. The greedy always want more, but the godly love to give. They love to give. I always like they love to give. Those two words go together, that giving is loving. Well, so we're going to talk about the givers, the generous, then the takers, and then after the takers, I'm going to give definition to the matchers. So we, we know what a giver is. He's the generous, okay? The one who is free to give their opinion, their time, you know, their, their money, their attention, favorable words of encouragement. Let me give you a definition of a taker. A, the other word for a taker is a narcissist. And a narcissist is preoccupied with himself, admiration of himself. He is number one. He, he is the most imper, important person that he is going to see today. He's the most important person he's going to be with tonight is himself. Everything is judged is this going to benefit me. That's a narcissist. Um, so here's a test for narcissist test, okay? Go ahead and take it. Okay. Now, I timed that. The longer it took you to laugh, that's the indication that you were sticking on number one. <laughs> think about yourself. Let me think about, think about you. What am I think about myself? If it, that's kind of leaning to the narcissist side of life. A narcissist, now, I would say, there's no scientific study that came up with this cartoon. Uh, but that is basically uh, the whole mindset of a narcissist. Now, so we have the givers, we have the takers, it doesn't benefit me. Then we have the matchers. The matchers can give if they're going to get. It's like, I'll have no problem with helping them because I know that I'm going to get from them. That's the matchers, right? So we have givers, we have takers, 
And then those who are in between. They're not really narcissists because they give, but they only give if they're going to get. They're matching what I give and what I'm going to receive. Well, which brings us to the point on the matchers and where we are in the church. If you notice in the series, last week uh, Aslan gave just a, just a great message on lavish giving, how God just lavishes us with his love, his giving. And even when Pete spoke the week before, we're very careful to not give you all those scriptures, which they're all hooked. All the scriptures say how blessed you're going to be if you give. Oh, you can count on you getting blessed. We're careful not to do that, although it's all throughout the scriptures. Givers get blessed because they're acting like their father in heaven who's a giver, who blesses. But because we're fallen creatures, so, so often that tagline, what you're going to get, gets in front of your heart to give the right heart to give. And so often we read the scriptures and we just see what we're going to get. Is that not just a matcher? Where our heart should be what God said. I kind of call it, well, I mean, let, let me give you some of the scriptures in Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it will be given to. My emphasis is give. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, and it will be poured onto your lap. It's there. It's in the scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Whoever sows sparingly will reap, and whoever sows bountifully will reap. Acts 20, 37. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed, what David just read today, is more blessed to give. Than, and Paul's recalling what Jesus told him. Remember what the Lord told us? But because we're fallen creatures, we, we forget what's in front of all of that. That someone gave us the most precious gift in the world to change my life so I can give. He gave his son's life. How does anything compare to that? I've already received my reward. Heaven. I've, I've received it how many times over and the blessings, that my, having the family that I have, seeing the things that I've been able to see. <laughs> I'm in debt. I've already received. My heart is about giving because it's almost like I've got, I've got, I received more than I've given. I'm running to catch up, not running to get. Does that make sense? It's, it's our heart that we need to take a look at. Why are you giving? Are we matchers? I, I look at this going, yeah, it's almost like, hey, we're going to have a teaching on giving. It's like, hey, I'll take uh, Romans 8.26, red, and we're betting on it. No, 2 Kings. no. No, don't bet on 2 Kings. I'm going to bet on, on Isaiah 57. I'm going to lay it down there on that scripture and hope my number comes up. That's not what the scriptures say is the right heart. Today, I want to be sure that my motivation is in the right place. My generosity is of the right heart. Because if it's the right heart, oh yeah, all these things. Now some, some of you are going, well, this definitely is not a name it and claim it church. Although, <laughs> at least not this message. <laughs> 
We, it's so hard because when you testify what God has given you, he gives. He is such a giving and loving God. He is a God who blesses and rewards those who are generous. It's just, it's a point that I would like to make. Says, if, if you have a spirit of generosity as a means of receiving, it's really just a spirit of exploitation. Does that make sense? Yeah. If, if, if my motivation to give is to get, if my motivation to get you to give is to get, it's just exploitation in the church. And that's how so many people see it. And that's not it at all. That's not the picture that, that the scriptures give us. Generosity, generosity is it's not a money change but a lifestyle change see if it's exploitation there's a, we're thinking in exchange of money you know, I give money I get money but it's a lifestyle change generosity comes from a lifestyle not some type of investment or exploitation 2 Corinthians look at the spirit of this you must each decide in your heart how much to give. Right there, it's, it's you need to decide this. You need to decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in re response to pressure. Woo! For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. And plenty left over to do what? You see, it's not a one-time thing. It's your heart. And once you're generous, you're always generous. You receive, and you know, look what I receive because I'm going to be generous again. It's a constant flow. God knows who to invest in because they're an investor. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Pastor Peter shared, it wasn't any on generosity, but one of the scriptures he used, his teaching, his main scripture text, was the rich young ruler. And the rich young ruler came to Jesus and he walks in, he goes, you know, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus says, you know, you got to obey your mother and father, do all this, do all this, keep the commandments. And the rich young ruler says, I've done that since a child. And Jesus, seeing his heart, he goes, knowing that he had wealth, he goes, then take all your wealth and give it away and follow me. Because he knew that this man was going to follow his riches. I said, the rich young ruler's face just dropped to the ground, and he turned and left. <laughs> okay. That's verse 26 that ends there. But the story doesn't end. So Peter, feeling sorry for himself, because <laughs> Jesus tells the story, he goes, he goes you, know, you know how hard it is going to be for the rich to get to heaven? It's like, you know, a camel going through the eye of a needle. So Peter missing the whole thing. He's going, you know, because you're thinking, well, the rich get everything they want. And if it's hard for the rich to get through, what about us? We gave everything away. <laughs> oh, Peter. The rich young ruler leaves. And this is Jesus' response. Yes, Jesus replied. And I assure you that anyone who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have in the eternal life the one to come. Why didn't Jesus do that when the rich young ruler was there? Because it, it would have been a match game. It would have been a match game. He didn't tell the rich young ruler, just give everything you want, give it all away and have faith. You're going to get it back. No. 
There's no match game. We are sold for the fact that there's one who, who's given far more than we can ever repay him for. He gave to us. He considers us his treasure. I don't get that. I'm just, Jesus doesn't play the match game. Are you in or are you out? Here's what I found, that many people have enough faith to believe what they want God to do for them but lack faith to believe what God wants them to do for him. See, we want our hearts and not in the right place. And do you know how many people get burnt out when, when they're playing the match game, when they've been challenged by someone who's given a great message up here, is going, you need to give to God, you're going to get back. And we have testimonies. We've had test, video testimonies of people going, you know what? <clears throat> We just did this faith move and God blessed us. Great. But their heart was, I'm giving to God if I get nothing back. If I get nothing back, I, I owe the Lord so much that I can't. I can't give what I owe him for what he's done for me. That's where the generosity comes from. And I do this because of what the Lord has done for me. He has shown me his generosity. And he has told us that the rewards for the generous is greater to give than receive. And he wants us to be like him for the community. That's why this works when you're a community. I want you to know that the generous people burn out. There's a warning that comes with this. And here's how you burn out. Two ways, that you're a generous person and you're not in a community. In a church, you can come here and not be in a community. You, you cannot get gathered with other people where people can see your triumphs, you know, and, and your struggles. Where you, you, don't, you don't gather with somebody during the week and they can see your lack or your need and they can be generous to you. That's in a community that can happen. If you're by yourself, if you're an individual and you're generous, you give out because the generous also need to learn how to receive. And you can be in a community and be a generous person. You're a giver, but you can't receive from people. Oh, no, that's my position. I'm the giver. I want you to know you're going to burn out if you do not receive from other people. And too often, people in the church see themselves as the generous one. And they can't receive from someone else. You can't receive. If you can't receive, you're going to burn out. You have to receive if you're going to give. You have to be in a community for this to work. So... I just want you to know that probably everyone in here is here because of someone's generosity. Someone's generosity has gotten you to this place. Someone has, you know, years ago been faithful in their tithe that they might have given even special gifts. Uh, you got coffee today because of someone's generosity. You know, people have come, they come here early to set up, to do coffee, to... To, to open the buildings, to, to help us park. You, someone's generosity with their words to encourage you years ago, maybe recently, to come to the church. But those words of, of, of encouragement was out of someone's generosity to go another mile to say something to you, to befriend you. I tell you the, greatest, the greatest way to get people to... To introduce them to churches, befriend them, invite them to stuff, be a friend. That's being generous to, 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 to friend someone. It takes a lot of work, some of you more, a lot of grace. <laughs> 
But if there's one person who's given the most, that you're here. It happened 2,000 years ago. That's the most generous gift. That I can walk free. Sometimes I have to work at it. I can walk free of guilt. From failing. But because of the gift that the Lord gave us in his son. He gave us his son. He turned his back on his son on the cross as he took on the sins of the world and paid the price of all failure. That should make us a generous person because he has called us to be givers as he was and he is. Generosity comes from a heart that's flowing with love. Gratefulness. Not matching. Now let me make it clear. The, the scriptures tell us God rewards those who are givers. With the right heart. Not matchers. I'm giving because he is worthy. He is worthy to receive my worship. He is worthy to receive anything I can do that will further his kingdom. From coffee, from money, from my time spent for, for praying. I had someone, I was going over my notes in the, in, in the green room over here. And I was just minding my own business, looking at my notes. And he comes up, puts his hand on me, and he goes, I know you're studying, let me pray for you. That's gracious. That's love. He didn't pray for me. He was praying for all of y'all to receive what I had to say. <laughs> He's heard me preach before. Oh, Lord, please. Help them to receive it, Father. Oh, gosh. He's going to offend someone today. <laughs> that's what I heard. It's not what you said, but that's what I heard. <laughs> gracious. I know I've given, and I felt like I needed to give sometimes out of match game, the match game. God, I don't want to have, to have God try to figure out what my heart, my motivation was. I want to give because it's a lifestyle change, not a money exchange. I don't want to give because I'm going to get. I want to give because I've already gotten. I've gotten. I've gotten the lottery, guys. I've won the lottery. And no, I didn't win the Florida lottery. <laughs> don't email me. You know, I've got this house I need to get paid for. <laughs> Have you won the lottery in your heart? Yes. Have we slipped into falling into that fleshly thing where I'm playing the match game now? I'm going to, you know, they're motivating me to give because I'm going to get. You don't have to, no. You decide what you're going to give in your heart, in every situation. And I know we're going to be doing a campaign to get us out in the popka. But we have to have a community that comes together to practice generosity. It's the only way it works. It's the only way I know what your needs are is that you come to community to be able to receive. It's the only way you'll be, be able to know where to give, to be generous, to be like our Father in heaven. So when we stand, I want this to be purposed in your heart. Lord, have I played the match game? And if I have, forgive me. Because here's how you know you've played the match game is that you've not, you've fallen in need of something or you didn't get the, 
the new truck to do something and you're angry at God. You were playing the match game. Because if you were really grateful for what he's done for you, you're behind. Because <laughs> everything you have belongs to him. It's his. When I gave me to him, I gave him my family. I gave him all. That's what all means. All. So I, I'll be the first one when we stand to, to ask the Lord to forgive me the times I've played the match game. And I just invite you to do the same. So let's stand. Father, I pray for myself. I pray with the congregation to forgive us for when we played the match game. And we've complained that, oh, I gave, I've been believing for you, this to happen for the last two months and now you failed me. Father, uh, forgive us of playing the match game and forgetting that we've won the lottery. We have been forgiven of our sin, of our shame. And those sins that we repent of that we that will come upon us. Father, you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of anything that we have. Lord, we're just giving back to what you've shared with us, that you've allowed us to gain. Father, I want to be a generous person. I want to be like you. I want to be one who blesses, one who gives. I want the protection to fall on my children and my get grandchildren that they're not going to be enslaved to that spirit of scarcity, to a spirit that there's not enough. That's not the God we serve. So our generosity, I'm prophesying right now, protects our children and our grandchildren from that spirit of scarcity that I can't do this, I can't give to that, I can't help them because there's not enough to go around. Father, we reach in our bowl and gather, pull out our flour to make the cake for the prophet. That I'll, I'll never run out of that flour and oil until the rains come again. Until the rains come again, we will not run out. And when the rains come, we can prosper beyond imagination in our own power. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for being a generous God and showing us the way. And all God's people said, amen. amen.